Done much rallying? That's a joke. We've all seen what you've been up to. We're doing the next bit on location. You'll see why when you get there. destination. Ford, that most American of cars. But the Ford Escort, oh, that's British. And more than that, the Escort would become, for many, synonymous with Group B. In the 70s, Ford had embraced that destiny so firmly that they'd begun their own championships to find new drivers. Drivers for cars like the RS1800. This was a car designed explicitly for rallying, with a powerful, fuel-injected 1790cc Cosworth BDE engine. Homologation rules required that all cars entered into the group be production, so Ford built 200 of them. The RS1800 raced to victory after victory across the rallying world on almost every continent and across every terrain type imaginable. This car was basically unbeatable. The RS1800 brought home 17 World Rally Championship victories for Ford. So, of course, Ford set out to design a better one. The RS200 Evolution was their answer. A purpose-built rally car designed to do one thing, win Group B. With a 1.8 turbocharged Ford Cosworth BDT engine and all-wheel drive, the RS200 had perhaps the best suspension platform of any car of its era. The chassis was fiberglass from Reliant and the massive Ford parts bin was raided to give the car that iconic look. But while the car had potential, turbo lag at low RPM and a poor power to weight ratio meant that it never placed better than third. The end of Group B in the mid 80s meant the end of the RS200 as a rallying car. Fortunately, Ford built over 200 as part of the homologation requirements for Group B, so you can still find them, if you're lucky.
You know, I really like this car. Not that I'd want to drive it for too long. Squeeze yourself in there and let's see just how fast you can make it go. Which won't be too fast. But hey, I could be surprised. The Peel P50 has the dubious honor of being the smallest production car in the world. A one-door micro car coupe featuring a 42cc air-cooled engine capable of a heinous 38 miles an hour and a handle so you can pick it up and carry it with you when you get to work. And keep in mind that this is the production version. The prototype had the single wheel at the front. Why would you think that was a good idea? In 2010, though, production restarted at Sutton in Ashfield. So, if you'd like to own the modern incarnation of this, I suppose you can. at your destination. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. yards you will arrive at your destination. You have arrived at your destination. Hi, it's Laracer. I'm at the Horizon Festival in the UK. I'm at Horizon! It's awesome! Come join me. I'll be streaming every day. Today, we'll be counting down my top 10 favorite cars. And I've got a guest. Who? Just one of the biggest rising stars at the Horizon Festival. Number 10, the Ferrari Testarossa and OutRun, which is one of the best games of all time. I don't care about stand-up or console port. This game is a classic. If you've not played it, pause this right now and go play it. Oh, wait. Great, everyone's back. Let's drive. Get ready, go! In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left. Four hundred yards, 
Turn right. Turn right. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. Beautiful. I'm pretty jealous. I would have loved to drive that. But I've been fielding questions and comments. My subscribers love watching you drive. This is going to be great content. As soon as you're ready, I'll set up another stream. Welcome back, everyone. We're counting down the 10 best car experiences in games. I'm at the Horizon Festival, and we just saw the Testarossa rerunning the sun. It's time for number nine. I've chosen Smuggler's Run and this gorgeous 2016 Aerial Nomad, and we are gonna make it fly. I've got the route in your sat now. Go, 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 go! Enjoy riding in Smuggler's Run? Sure, you could use it to discover the map and learn the best routes, but it was for exploring and jumping off things. Are you ready for another pickup? <laughs> I have got loads more content lined up. Just message me when you're ready. I've got the route in your sat now. Go, 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 go! Re 
really gun it along here. My subscribers love seeing that rally style stuff. Joyriding in Smuggler's Run? Sure, you could use it to discover the map and learn the best routes, but it was for exploring and jumping off things. Are you ready for another pickup? <laughs> I have got loads more content lined up. Just message me when you're ready. So, how many of you remember the first cross-platform racing game? Not talking about Xbox and PC, I am talking about uh, Amstrad and Apple, Atari, Amiga, Commodore, and MS-DOS. <laughs> it's time for number eight, the Countach, and a speed trap. Let's race like it's 1987. Right, this car just wants to go, so go. Blast past that speed camera. Choosing the car for this one was so hard, but I have to love the Countach. Those angles, that paint job. If I'm wrong about it being the first cross-platform racing game, let me know in the comments. Whoa, that is beautiful. Bring it back, I wanna go. Right, this car just wants to go. So go, blast past that speed camera. Choosing the car for this one was so hard, but I have to love the Countach. Those angles, that paint job. And if I'm wrong about it being the first cross-platform racing game, let me know in the comments. Bring it back, I wanna go. 